Welcome in, everybody, to Daniel Jeremiah's Mock Draft, presented by NFL All Day, the official digital collectible of the 2023 NFL Draft. We are just one day away from the big day right here on NFL Network tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern. Pinch me. I can't believe we're here in Kansas City. I'm so excited. I can't wait for this mock. I've been waiting for this all week, all draft season. Colleen Wolf here with Charles Davis and the man with the mock, Daniel Jeremiah. How you feeling? I'm ready. We made it. We made it to Kansas City. It felt like an eternity to get from the combine here to the draft, but it is a beautiful setting, and I cannot wait to get this thing kicked off. Yeah, let's get this thing going. I love the fact that Colleen's representing KC here. She's got the red the Kansas City Red going. You know, she knows her location. I know my audience. I am fully <laughs> prepared. This is a beautiful city. It's beautiful outside here as well. Let's get into it, though. Before we get to the picks, I want to set the scene a little bit for tomorrow. Four teams will have multiple first-round picks. The Texans have the second and 12th overall because of the Deshaun Watson trade. The Seahawks pick at five from the Russell Wilson deal, plus their own pick at 20. The Lions select at six as a result of the Matthew Stafford trade and their own 18th pick. And then the Eagles have the Saints selection at 10, plus their own pick at 30th overall. Okay, so because of those trades, five teams are without a first round pick. The Dolphins, they forfeited their original 21st selection due to violating league policies for tampering. The 49ers, they don't have a first rounder due to the Trey Lance trade with the Dolphins, which Miami then traded to the Broncos for Bradley Chubb at last year's trade deadline. So there you have it. We have set the stage for this year's NFL draft. DJ. I need one more answer here. What will define this year's class? An easy one. Yeah, this is an easy one with an easy answer. Sometimes we arrive at the draft and we're trying to create quarterbacks out of thin air. They just don't exist. That is not the case this year. We have five guys that could potentially hear their name called in the first round, and I think they're worthy, Charles. They're very talented guys, some a little further along in their journey than others, but, man, there's a lot of intrigue provided by the QBs in this class. And the first definition is exactly that. We have the guys here. The sub-definition, though, is how they develop. Because in this draft, this isn't that lock quarterback at the top when Trevor Lawrence went, when Andrew Luck went, where we said he's that guy. Here, we nitpicking all of them. All of them have those flaws that make you think, I like another guy a little bit better. How will they develop? How will they become those guys that become franchise makers? That's what we're looking forward to seeing down the line. It's going to be very unpredictable. Plenty of surprises. We're already hearing different whispers about what's to come. It's going to be a wild night tomorrow. We can't wait to get things going right here on NFL Network, 8 p.m. Eastern. So let's get to the final mock draft of the 2023 season. DJ, the Panthers, they are officially on the clock. Which quarterback are they taking? All right, here we go. Let's get this thing okay. cranked up here. I'm going to go Bryce Young as the pick for the Carolina Panthers. Frank Reich needs somebody to usher this Panthers uh, football team into a new era. And Charles, to me, is the best quarterback in this class. He makes a lot of sense there. I know people got hung up on the size with Frank Reich and his previous quarterbacks. He never had an opportunity to get a player like Bryce Young. Yeah, and he's the type of guy that when you say, okay, maturity counts at the quarterback position, he's going to live the quarterback lifestyle. 365 days out of the year, 24 hours per day, that's who this young man is. Every day he knows he's a quarterback and going to be a starting quarterback and he's going to produce. Plenty of arm for everything you need. That six cents to get out of the pocket when he has to, but also keep a play alive and find receivers downfield. Yeah, and you see the comparison there on the bottom with Drew Brees. The way he plays the game, he's a distributor. We talk about sometimes you have shooters, sometimes you have scores. He can do a little bit of both. He is an outstanding point guard there for Alabama. It's the P's to me. It's the four P's. You start with pocket awareness. He has that sixth sense to feel pressure, climb away from it, and deliver the ball down the field. You go from there to poise. You get free rushers, not a problem. He doesn't panic. The eyes stay up. He delivers the ball accurately in the middle of the field. And when you talk about placement, this is the best throw to demonstrate it. Kansas State, Julius Brent's a corner. We'll hear his name called on day two. You cannot be in better position. But Bryce Young basically hands the ball to the receiver down the field. And then finally, the playmaking. Didn't get as many opportunities over the years because of what was in front of him. This year, he got some more and made some big-time plays like that one in the LSU game. On your baseball card, you said he reminds you a little bit of Drew Brees, right? That's Correct. one of the comps. I'm going to go you one more. How about Doug Flutie? And the reason I wanted to pay homage to Doug Flutie is Doug Flutie came ahead of his time. 
people didn't want to accept that Doug Flutie's size could be a, a terrific player and a starting quarterback in the NFL. But guess what? Bryce Young's here now. He is what Doug Flutie was all those years ago. This type of size, yet the same playmaking ability. Did you see what Bryce Young just did on that? Look at Doug Flutie. Exit, move, eyes downfield, throw the dart, touchdown. Now how about Drew Brees? When you want to throw from the pocket, look at the footwork. Feel the pressure, dance away by a couple of steps, and throw the perfect ball to the receiver. Bryce Young can beat you from the pocket. He can beat you moving outside of it. Real quick marketing idea. If you're going to go Flutie Flakes, you can go Bryce Cakes. Done. Oh, it's wow. done. Just put That's it down right now pocket. and start selling those. Are, are your people trademarking it as we speak? <laughs> We're working on it. Let's get it out there. I love it. Okay, so the Panthers and new head coach Frank Reich, he gets his franchise quarterback and also your number one overall player in the entire draft. So now it gets pretty interesting with the Texans at two. DJ, the gossip, it is hot. Are the Texans picking or passing on a quarterback? Well, I keep coming back to common sense because okay. I've heard all this swirling around about what they could do and go in a different direction. They don't have a quarterback. They've got to get one. And to me, it makes the most sense. C.J. Stroud is worthy of the second overall pick. He's better than any quarterback they have currently on their roster in Houston. I know they have other needs, C.D. I know there's other places they could go with this pick. But if they leave the first round, they leave those first two picks without their future quarterback, I think it would be a failure. Third straight year that they're starting the year with a brand new head coach. It's time to stop that. One way to stop it, get your franchise quarterback in place and let him grow with your head coach. C.J. Stroud makes perfect sense of being able to do that, to go in a, and assume that position. Because remember, at Ohio State, you are a franchise quarterback. No doubt. I want to show you some plays just specifically from that Georgia game. Talk about him being all world in that game. He showed you everything that you need to see, the pocket movement. Didn't see a ton of that earlier in the year. You saw it all in this game. He is a rhythm accuracy thrower. Gets his feet in the ground, has that same release point, puts the ball pinpoint exactly where he wants it. This is some of that creativity, the ability to escape. Jalen Carter's unblocked right in the middle of the formation. You're able to get away from him quickly and make a play down the field. Another example of that creativity. Doesn't take off and run for two yards, Charles. Keeps his eyes up, delivers a touchdown. And then as an athlete, he's going to be more of a first down runner than a touchdown runner, but he's going to be able to get you those yards that they're presented and those opportunities come up. Yeah, and I think at Ohio State, he didn't feel like he had to do a lot of that. He'll have to do a little bit more if he does go to the Houston Texans. How about this for a comp? Kenny Pickett, the only quarterback taken in the first round last year from Pitt. Both of these young men love to win from the pocket. They will beat you with their mind and their arm from there. Look at the footwork. See how easy that is for him? Set up in the pocket and throw the football. This is what Kenny Pickett does so well in addition. Watch him here at pitch, looking off, looking off the safety from one side, come back to the other side, and find George Pickens, his sensational rookie receiver last year. Both of them would get out and dance if they need to, Colleen. Mm -hmm. But the pocket is their friend. So Stroud would join Robert Woods and Dalton Schultz as some of the new faces there in Houston on the offense. So now we go to the third <laughs> overall pick, okay? Let's get into some possible trade destinations with the Cardinals. They don't need a quarterback at this point. So what does new GM Monty Austinport do here, DJ? Well, you see that logo right there. So wait, Houston just picked. Yeah, no, I've got him picking back to back. What? I've got him going from 12 back up to three. There's a lot of chatter folks I talked to saying the decision at two is going to come down to CJ Stroud versus Will Anderson. And I live in a utopian society in CD <laughs> where they can get both. And it wouldn't be that costly. When you look at what it would cost on the trade chart, I think they could get this done with a two this year, one of their two threes and a three next year and they're able to get the best defensive player of the draft in Will Anderson. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I'm going to join you in Pleasantville because not only are they getting the best defensive player, they're doing the so-called safe pick, the right pick, because there's so much talk about taking Tyree Wilson and his traits, which Jacksonville took with Trayvon Walker last year. Detroit mm -hmm. took the productivity in Aiden Hutchinson, and it paid off big time. This time, Nick Casario says, I like this kid from Bama. He's produced. He's coming to Houston. Yeah, and D'Amico Ryans, he gets his Nick Bosa. Yeah. And it's a bonus that he's an Alabama guy just like <laughs> D'Amico Ryans. So now the Colts are up next in desperate need of a quarterback. They've had a different week one starter every year since Andrew Luck unexpectedly retired before the 2019 season. So does Chris Ballard finally land his guy? Is this the year? Yeah, he's got to get off the veteran quarterback carousel and get a quarterback. And to me, Will Levis, when you look at the traits that he possesses, that's something that Chris Ballard has always valued. Will Levis, Charles, can do a lot of things and expand your playbook with his athleticism and arm strength. 
and be an exciting fit there in the backfield with Jonathan Taylor in place and a couple big wideouts he can throw the rock to. And remember, during his time at Kentucky, a Penn State transfer, so people want to ding him for leaving Penn State. Hey, you didn't beat out Sean Clifford. Sometimes you find your pastures are greener elsewhere. How about in Kentucky where the, 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 the blue grass makes you so much better? But here's what you think about Will Levis. All the traits that you like, being able to throw the football downfield, being strong, the big arm, athletic out of the pocket. What you're looking at, though, is decision-making. That's the thing that you're going to worry about a little bit, DJ. Yeah, it, you know, the decision-making was a little bit of an issue, but you can get fired up when you see the highlights of what he brings to the table because of his skill set. Talk about high-velocity passer. He can drive the ball, and then you want to get over the top deep balls and really stretch out a defense. He can do it. He's got a huge arm. Tight window throws. In the NFL, the windows really shrink. He saw some of those smaller windows playing with Kentucky in the SEC. He can fit the ball in there. Off-platform has been good to him at times and bad to him at times. You saw the good side there. The toughness, you cannot question. Played through a toe, played through a shoulder injury. He hangs in the pocket, makes things happen. And then as a runner, this is all you need to see from an athleticism standpoint. Go ahead, hit me with the hurdle. Running down the field. The toe this year severely impacted his ability to make plays with his legs. He was not the same player. They get him fully healthy. He could be a fun fit there with the Colts. And he's a young man who wants to be QB1. He wants yeah. to take on the mantle of leading a franchise and being the face that, that, that leads them. The other part about this young man is he's worked with two offensive coordinators back-to-back -back with NFL experience. So he comes in knowing, under, knowing and understanding NFL concepts. What makes him polarizing is what I talked about before. Some of the decisions you see, they make you scratch your head a little bit. Sometimes I think it was him trying to make a play that was bigger than what was there ah. to help his ball club. Took too many sacks, too, over the last two years. And they have a talented offensive line that didn't play great last year in Indianapolis. The big blue line wasn't the normal big that blue line. That group has got to be better. Whoever they select at quarterback, that offensive line's got to be better. But he is a tough guy, and he understands where the weight room is, and he <laughs> wants to be that quarterback. And think about the personality in that quarterback room with you when you have Will Levis and Gardner, Gardner Minshew. Minshew. I mean, high ceiling on personality <laughs> in that room. Jarts, so, and, jarts and bananas with peels. <laughs> there you go. Three quarterbacks in the top four picks. What a way to start the night. Florida quarterback Anthony Richardson, though, still available, still out there. Will he end up going five to Seattle? We'll have to wait and see. Find out for real tomorrow night as the 2023 NFL Draft presented by Bud Light begins. You can tune in for NFL Network Draft coverage presented by Verizon. Additional coverage on ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes and streaming on NFL Plus at 8 p.m. Eastern. More picks on the way. Stay right here. Colleen Wolf here, Charles Davis, Daniel Jeremiah here with his final mock draft of 2023. It is draft eve. I can't even believe it. And DJ's given us this early gift, you know, his final mock before our coverage begins at, if I didn't say it before, I'll say it again, 8 p.m. Eastern on NFL Network. Everybody write it down, lock it in, get ready. We have three quarterbacks going one, two, and four, and the Texans trade up from 12 to select your top-ranked edge rusher here, Will Anderson Jr. at three. We love the chaos. I love it so much. It's all in full swing. Now we have the Seahawks up. They could add a quarterback to learn under Geno Smith at this point. So, DJ, do they make that pick? Well, a quarterback's in play here. You look at Tyree Wilson, edge rusher, being in play. We got some corners that could make some sense. But Jalen Carter has been the topic of conversation with Pete Carroll and the Seahawks. Do they or don't they? I'll get one text one minute from a GM that says there's no way. The next minute I'll get it from another GM that says, oh, they won't pass on Jalen Carter. Trust me, Pete would love to have a guy like this. I know one thing. He's the most dominant player on tape in this entire draft class. And Charles, if they're comfortable with him off the field, there's no doubt in my mind there is not a better fit in that defensive front than right here with Jalen Carter. And it's been very interesting because the off the field has involved, unfortunately, some tragedy. Two people lost their lives. But then he also, that, that, that case has been adjudicated. It's done. The next part is he goes to his pro day. And you see quickness, leverage, and power. I love how you brought up Quinnen Williams. Because it took Quinton Williams a season or two to develop, but this guy could be Quinton Williams right out of the gate, DJ. No, he is talented. Last year, all those Georgia defensive players were drafted. You couldn't take your eyes off number 88, even that amongst so all true. those guys. Yeah, everybody time they talked about those defensive players last mm -hmm. year, they said, yeah, wait till next year. Oh, I, I mean, and I cannot wait here. to see them actually play in the NFL. <laughs> also, this is just such uncharted territory, too, for John Schneider, because the Seahawks yeah. are usually in the 20s, not top five. So I cannot wait to see what they do with that pick. The Lions, though, now DJ 
CJ. They are on the clock with one of their two first round picks. This one courtesy of the Rams and Matthew Stafford. So DJ, what do you think Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell do here? Well, this is one of the more fun teams in the NFL last year to watch them and see how competitive and feisty they were. And I think they've taken on the identity of their coach. So I try to say, okay, who's a player at a neat position that fits that identity? And I just keep coming back to Devin Witherspoon. It makes too much sense for them. You put him in the secondary. He plays with a major chip on his shoulder. There's no breaks, Charles. It is all gas. He trusts his eyes. He plays fast and physical. I just think he matches the culture of these young Detroit Lions. So you're telling me that Robert Sala is going to want to move up and get him? All gas, no breaks? There you go. Oh, yeah, he was exactly fit what them it as is. well. They're in pretty good shape at corner. We get to pick seven back-to-back corners. Corners, the Raiders. You could look offensive line here. I know there's been some chatter, potentially a quarterback. I think they're going to roll with Jimmy Garoppolo. They need to upgrade this secondary. And when you look at Christian Gonzalez, the height, weight, speed is outstanding. He's incredibly loose and fluid as an athlete, and he can find and play the football. They have got to get better in the secondary in Vegas. All right, we get next here to the Atlanta Falcons, and let, why not? Let's have a little fun here. I oh, know, I love fun. I know the debate about You've talked about backs. this for the last week or so. <laughs> I've heard everybody say you can't do it. Well, I'm saying you can do it. You can take B. John Robinson, who I believe is the third best player in this entire draft. You can put him in an offense where you have Drake London, a young wide receiver with size and athleticism. Kyle Pitts, we're going to keep him healthy for the full year. And now we're going to drop B. John Robinson in the backfield and see if we can't get this offense cranked up a little bit, C.D. We go to the video, explosive and loose. A lot of times when you're looking at running backs, if you have speed, you get a little bit of tightness. If you have a guy who's real loose and elusive, uh, he doesn't have that top speed. He combines both of those. You look at his short area quickness, the ability to stop, start, change directions. It's at a very elite level. The ability to make people miss in space, count them here, is one, two, and three defenders have a shot to get him on the ground. They go 0 for 3. He forced more missed tackles than any runner in college football last year. And then as a three-down weapon, you want to get him out of the backfield. You want to line him up in the formation. He can make plays. You see him catching a ball down the field like a slot-wide receiver. And after the catch, not only can he make you miss, he can take it the distance. So to me, this Atlanta Falcons team, all of a sudden you look at this young nucleus they would have collected here with Bijan Robinson. We got something cooking there with Arthur Smith. So Arthur Smith, coming from Tennessee as the offensive coordinator, had Derrick Henry throw the ball to A.J. AJ Brown downfield. A very so similar setup this. now. Recreating that a little bit. I like where you're going. How about this for a comp? Recency comp would be Saquon Barkley for this young man. Edgerin James would be another excellent comp. I think you like that one, DJ. How about LT? Ladanian Tomlinson. Because he is a three-down back. And when he runs the football, he reminds me of LT in terms of vision, speed, contact balance, that cutting ability, always finding open space and places to maneuver and move the ball downfield. Plus, as DJ showed you, his ability to catch the football out of the backfield and be a primary weapon in the pass game, not just a check down guy. That was LaDainian Tomlinson all day long with the Chargers, with the Jets, all the way to the Hall of Fame. By the way, you could have gone B. John Robinson starting at six with Detroit. Yeah. And all that makes sense. That's how good a player Charles he is. Charles has notes for you. Yeah, he's ready. I, I always <laughs> take down his suggestions for next year. Yeah. Um, okay, so obviously being comped to a Hall of Famer is pretty good for B. John Robinson. But the Bears, they originally had that number one overall pick. But after grabbing DJ Moore and an extra second rounder, now they're sitting at nine. So what do they do here? Well, they're due for some good fortune, right? I thought they had a home run trade. I love the trade that they made, the return they got, including DJ Moore. Here's more good fortune with Tyree Wilson falling in their lap at number nine. You could make cases that he could be the second pick overall to the Houston Texans. In this case, they get some desperately needed talent on that defensive front. They've added some bodies. You think about Calais Campbell. They just added Bud Dupree not too long ago. Let's throw another guy in the mix here and see if we can get after the quarterback. Yeah, head coach, head coach there, Matt Eberflew. A defensive Ooh. specialist, he wants somebody who can go get after the passer. He would love him. So the Bears, they bolster that defense with an impact rusher and your number four overall prospect. So pretty good for them after picking up more draft capital and a number one wide receiver for Justin Fields. Um, pretty good haul there. I like it. Coming up next, though, the Eagles are looking to defend their NFC crown. And after giving Jalen Hurts a monster contract extension, Will they bolster their wide receiver room? A pass catcher will be picked when we come back, and it could be a big surprise. Plus, we got 
the Jets and the Packers agreeing to the Aaron Rodgers deal. What will Green Bay do after moving up two spots? Who will the Jets take at 15? So many questions. DJ has all of these answers for you. It's all ahead on Daniel Jeremiah's mock draft presented by NFL All Day. Back here on Daniel Jeremiah's mock draft. Just to recap, we have Bryce Young going first off the board to Carolina. Of course, uh, the Texans do take a quarterback at two in C.J. Stroud, then trade with the Cardinals for Will Anderson Jr. The Colts take Kentucky's Will Levis, followed by Jalen Carter, Devin Witherspoon, Christian Gonzalez, Bijan Robinson, and Tyree Wilson all gone. So... With Bijan off the board, um, the highest uh, running back's been drafted since Saquon Barkley went second overall in 2018. How does Howie Roseman and his crew draft this pick? Because Bijan was a popular one in many of the mocks. Well, I, I was one advocating that he made sense for Philadelphia, and then I always would couch it with, but I worked there for two years. There's no chance they'll do it. <laughs> Howie will not take a running back here this early in the draft. So I think line of scrimmage when I think Philadelphia Eagles, that's where their bread has been buttered for a very long time. Absolutely makes perfect sense, too, when you think about them. And now we're talking about adding another pass rusher yeah, because why not they go, were predominant for the Eagles last why year. Why not go back to the University of Georgia, too? Last year, they were happy. Jordan Davis and Kobe Dean, they bring them on board. They go back and get their teammate here in Nolan Smith, who's a true fastball, who's comp, by the way, with Hassan Reddick, who's already with the Philadelphia mm. Eagles. So I imagine when you get in pass rush situations, he can kind of play that Micah Parsons-type role, let him walk around as a rusher, find the matchup you want, and let that 4-3-9 speed get to work. And real quick about him, you're not going to have to go through the Hassan Reddick playing linebacker before moving outside, right? No Just doubt. Move. Great call. And this one's a little bit of a surprise. There's always wrinkles in the draft. I know when you think about the first wide receiver, we all expect that's more than likely going to be Jackson Smith and Jig. But when I look at the Tennessee Titans, though, I see a team that needs some juice. They need some speed. They need some explosiveness. I think Zay Flowers provides that CD. And, oh, by the way, it doesn't hurt that the head coach of the Tennessee Titans' son played with him in college. So we just, we're just we trying to connect some <laughs> dots here. And those are some pretty good dots to connect because they need big plays over the top. Drafted Traylon Burks last year out of Arkansas. They need to find a way to hurt defenses downfield after running the football with Derrick Henry. And this young man is as competitive as it gets at the wide receiver position. He will wear people down because when you look at it, who does he remind you of? Oh, Steve Smith. He's got a little Steve Smith to him. That's exactly who I, he reminds I me it. of. There we go. Here we and, are. And it's because of the competitive aspect of it. These two play the game with a fury. And last year, you could make an easy case that the only person who scared anyone on offense at Boston College was Zay Flowers. Do you see how he went up and competed for the football? Look at Steve Smith get physical off the line of scrimmage, stay physical, and go up and compete for the football and take it. Once the ball's in the air, both of them believe it's theirs. No one else's, and both of them know how to put it into the painted area of the field. Anytime we can get Steve Smith highlights in dude. the show, <laughs> it's a great show. Let's move to 12, though, where the Cardinals now reside after moving back with the Texans from number three in DJ's mock trade. So who's Arizona? who does Arizona have in mind here? Well, I think whether they trade out of three uh, or whether they stick and pick at three, there's a lot of momentum and buzz about them taking an offensive lineman, an area of their squad they have to address when Kyler Murray comes back healthy. So I had the trade taking place. They still have a lot of linemen in front of them, really, to, to go any direction that they want here. I have them taking Paris Johnson. And again, CD, I wouldn't be shocked if he was a third overall pick if they can't get out. Yeah, absolutely, because of his versatility and physicalness at the line of scrimmage. Remember, he played guard two years ago before kicking back out to left tackle this past season. And we've heard Kyler Murray loves him too, big fan of him, so I'm sure he would also be a big fan of the extra protection he would get with this pick as well. So let's go to 13 here because the Packers and the Jets, yes, they agreed to the trade that we expected, sending four-time MVP Aaron Rodgers to New York for a very nice haul. The Packers swapped first this year with the Jets, moving up two spots to 13. They add the Jets' second round pick, number 42 overall, and swap fifth and sixth rounders, moving up to 170 from 207. There's also a conditional 2024 second round pick that becomes a first rounder if 
Rodgers plays 65% or more snaps this season. So with Rodgers gone, Green Bay obviously drafts a wide receiver. What? Uh, there's talk about them with Jackson Smith and Jigba being a popular name you hear mentioned with Green Bay. I just go back to their track record. Even though it would be kind of a fun storyline, they finally take a first Since round wide receiver. They finally do it. I, I don't <laughs> see that. I think they are going to help Jordan Love out, though, with what I think is the best pass catcher, regardless of position. That's Dalton Kincaid. He's going to uncover. He's going to provide easy completions for Jordan Love. We get uh, to the next pick here. Guys, to me, the, there's certain people that just look like Patriots. And a lot of times, they're, they're like guys like Lucas Van Ness because they're versatile, they're smart, they're tough. And oh, by the way, you have the Bill Belichick, Kirk Ferentz connection. We know about that pipeline that's existed for a long time, CD. Well, absolutely. When you take about, we took a look at Van Ness, and I think his best football is ahead of him when you think about where he's going to go and how he develops. Yeah, I think he plays really heavy-handed. They would appreciate that. The Jets, this is a home run pick to get Peter Skaronsky kind of falling in their lap. I compared him to Elijah Vera Tucker. They would be teammates here. They'll kind of work it out which one's going to play guard, which one's going to play tackle, but they would play next to each other, provide some protection and, and, and some insurance along that offensive line because they've got a pretty valuable guy behind them at this point in time. <laughs> you think so? It's some guy named Rogers now? Might be a priority. Who's coming to town? <laughs> Might and, be a priority. And when he came in wearing the sweats yesterday, mm -hmm. all I kept thinking was West Side Story. When you're a Jet, you're a Jet all the way. Nice. And right now, all the way he wants is extra protection up front. Mm -hmm. Give him some time to make those throws downfield. Give him some time to get a little, you know, chemistry going with Garrett Wilson downfield. Give him some time to get the running game going to Brees Hall coming back. Mm -hmm. And if that happens... Oh, boy. West Side Story's really whistling a good tune then because Aaron Rodgers busting out. The Cal number eight is ready to rock and roll, but I do think offensive line is a place they have to give him that help to make this whole thing pay off and give them a chance to get to the playoffs because that's where they think they're headed now. And Charles, he was wearing the sweats, but he also wasn't wearing shoes in the I meeting I heard about room. that. That's an interesting choice. Um, I just thought the, the whole everyone needed to know about. Second. Aaron Rodgers, and you're thinking this is just <laughs> different? That's Aaron. Is Aaron being <laughs> that's Aaron? That's true. How about the Commanders? They're different, too. Now on the clock, finished last in the NFC East and need solutions for defending Jalen Hurts and Dak Prescott multiple times per year. So DJ, do they go defense after drafting Jahan Dotson in the same exact spot last year? Well, there's look, there's an intriguing quarterback that's out there that's still available in Anthony Richardson. I wouldn't totally rule that out. I wouldn't even rule out Hendon Hooker here as a, as a potential pick. Uh, but when I look at their secondary, I look at guys that can make plays on the ball. I think of Ron Rivera. I go back to his time with Josh Norman in Carolina. And it, to me, it's about can you find, play, and take the football away? Nobody does it better in this draft class than this guy right here in Emmanuel Forbes out of Mississippi State. Six pick sixes, if you're into that, that's uh, that's not a bad uh, resume he's put together. And not only that, he did it in high school. He had seven returns for touchdowns in high school, carried it over to Mississippi State, and he may weigh 166, but he'll bring that 166 on every snap. That's true. And, guys, uh, our producer, Luke, he wanted you to know that the Forbes list will certainly drive up the commander's value ah, with that pick. Shout bump, out, bump. Luke. Very nice. Ooh, guys, very nice. there is still plenty of talent remaining on the board. Anthony Richardson still out there. And the Buccaneers, Seahawks, and even the Ravens are all looming as potential destinations. Where will Richardson land? You can find out next on Daniel Jeremiah's Mock Draft presented by NFL All Day. Colleen Wolf, Charles Davis, and Daniel Jeremiah here for DJ's final mock draft presented by NFL All Day. So it is the Steelers' turn, and they haven't used a first or a second round pick on an offensive lineman in the last 10 drafts. DJ, do they break the streak here at number 17, or do they take Joey Porter Jr., who's still sitting there? Yeah, that would be a fun storyline, obviously, with the Porter family there in Pittsburgh. But to me, this offseason is about trying to rework this offensive line. You took Kenny Pickett last year. Now it's about protecting Kenny Pickett. An upgrade here, big time in Broderick Jones, CD, who's got all the talent in the world. He's raw. He's a third-year player. Remember, he had COVID in his first year that, that these guys did not get their full development. I think there's a better football ahead for Broderick Jones. And he's a flat-out finisher, too. Oh, he will get out in space, and he'll get after you. So now we get to the Lions' second pick. We started things off with them with Witherspoon, the corner, and now they go inside and they find an interior rusher to complement what's really one of the best young fronts in the NFL right now. We think about Aiden Hutchinson and Houston, what they've done. Now you put Kalijah Kansi inside with Aleem McNeil. That's a fun front for Dan Campbell and his group there in Detroit. 
We get here to Tampa. I don't think they would anticipate Jackson Smith and Jigba would be there. I don't know how much longer they're going to be able to continue to ride their wave with their veteran wide receiver there, Charles. So to me, I think this is someone that plugs in and plays right away, and we'll see how much longer Mike Evans is going to play there in Tampa. It sure helps whoever's going to play quarterback now following Tom Brady. It'll give you some easy completions. So uh, that's one of those ones. You start looking at needs with teams, but then there's also those instances where good players just fall in your lap and you don't pass on them. Well, speaking of good players just falling into your lap, Seattle's back up. They signed Geno Smith to a three-year extension, but they've been linked to some of the top quarterbacks in this draft class. Was it all a smokescreen? Have we just been lied to? Lots of meetings and lots of pictures, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, But to me, I think that it's got to be the right fit. It's got to be the right time. Now, maybe that happens with their first pick at five. I had them going with Jalen Carter. But when you get to 20 and this big guy is still there, I don't see how they could pass up on Anthony Richardson twice, CD. I just don't see that happening. No, I don't see it happening either. And it's the perfect system for him because what is Pete Carroll going to want to do always? Run the football, establish it. What does Anthony Richardson do well? He runs it too, so you now get the quarterback involved in the run game. Plus with his big arm, there's a guy by the name of DK Metcalf who knows how to get deep. He's going to find him downfield. Tyler Lockett, find him downfield. Throwing off of the play action, the added dimension of him running the football himself, that fits perfectly with what Seattle likes to do. Yeah, and he's a rare player in terms of the size-speed combination. You see Cam Newton's name there. That is a body type comparison. Obviously, resume-wise, two different levels of resume coming into the draft process. But when you watch him power arm, the ball jumps out of his hand. Look at the twitch in the movement with here in the pocket. There's nobody like him in this draft in so many different areas. That twitch within the pocket is one of them. So sudden in everything that he does. This is my favorite play of a quarterback in this draft class. Little jump pump fake spin against Utah creates a touchdown. How about some inside power? You want to run power like Jalen Hurts has run with the Philadelphia Eagles? No problem. His 244 pounds can handle it. And then there's quarterbacks that are going to try and eke out first downs. And then there's guys that are going to give you touchdowns. And in this case, a long (laughs) one, 80 yards against LSU. The upside of him is ridiculous. If you look at all these quarterbacks' lottery tickets, if you hit on all of them, the payout on Anthony Richardson is greater than anyone else. And if you had taken the Utah tape, you might have taken him to the top of the board, right? Be the, one if, if he played like he played in that Utah game, he would be the first pick in the draft, hands down. Yeah, and I just like the fact – I like the fit, Colleen. Mm-hmm. I like the fact of him going to Seattle because of what they like to do, the ability to run the football heavy, throw off of heavy play action, and then, of course, him being a part of the run game. And your Cam Newton comparison, not just body type. Cam Newton had one year as a starter in college. Anthony Richardson, one year as a starter in college. Similarities that way as well. Yeah, and this is their style, too, of guys. They love Seattle does drafting stars of the combine. We saw You mentioned DK Metcalf, Tyreek Woolen. I mean, this is Anthony Richardson is their kind of guy. So I would love to see it. I love the fit, too. Good job, DJ. We're almost there. We're getting there. We are. And we have so many options for you to watch where Richardson goes tomorrow. Rich Eisen will captain the NFL Network ship live from Kansas City on NFL Plus. You can play along and predict every single pick with NFL Plus Draft Room and follow every pick on NFL Draft Center on the NFL app and NFL.com slash NFL channel. I mean, it's a lot of options, so you guys better be watching. 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. Up next, though, the Dallas Cowboys moved on from Ezekiel Elliott and tight end Dalton Schultz. Will they draft either of their replacements with their first round pick in Daniel Jeremiah's mock draft? Find out next. And we're back here live in Kansas City. We proudly present to you the top 20 selections in Daniel Jeremiah's final mock draft. All four of the top quarterbacks gone. But could Hendon Hooker sneak into the back of this round? We continue here in Kansas City, home to the Super Bowl champs. And you know what? They're AFC West friends in L.A. They are on the clock at 21. DJ calls the games for the Chargers, so he knows exactly what they need. So do they go offense with new OC, <laughs> Kellen line. Moore? Yeah, no, this is, yeah, take it to the bank. I think yeah. if you go back and look, I haven't been so great at picking what the Chargers are going to do. Uh, but to me, when you look offense, you look at receiver, you look at tight end, it's a great tight end year. Michael Mayer from Notre Dame. To me, he's the best two-way tight end. I like Kincaid best at the position, but in terms of being a blocker as well as a pass catcher, he's he's a Hunter Henry type player who they've missed in that offense. And remember, they want to run the football a little bit more themselves, and he gives them that point of attack 
inline blocking, but don't go to sleep on his ability to catch the football downfield and break some tackles. And don't forget about the fact that uh, Tom Telesco loves getting players from Notre Dame. He's drafted a bunch over the years. We get to the Baltimore Ravens. They don't have to travel far. This is a tank of gas pick here. Just go to Maryland, find yourself a corner in Deontay Banks who has kind of risen up late in the process as more coaches have gotten involved in the tape watching. You start to see his name come up a lot more, a very athletic corner. Yeah, and he's going to play opposite Marlon Humphrey. They're going to need a guy there, and that will be a perfect spot for him. All right, the Minnesota Vikings, Adam Thielen is gone. Let's replace him here with Jordan Addison, who's my top wide receiver in the class. I think it's a great value pick to get him at this point in time. They like the receivers to be interchangeable, to be able to play inside and outside. Addison gives them that. Well, Justin Jefferson, very happy to get a running mate. He loved having Adam Thielen around, create a little extra space for himself. Jordan Addison to create extra space and create big plays downfield. And Colleen's been asking where Joey Porter Jr is going to go. I think I she's asked know. me like four times. So here's your answer. <laughs> there you I go. I have him going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. You think about traits. Trent Baalke loves traits. We saw it with the first overall pick last year in Trayvon Walker. And don't forget his aggressiveness. This is something this Jacksonville team became more and more uh, uh, comfortable in being as the season went on last year. He brings that aggressiveness now to Jacksonville. We get to the Giants. Think about their defensive coordinator and Wink Martindale, how much he loves versatility. He just blitz right now. He just blitz, he just blitz again. <laughs> and to me, with Brian Branch, I think he's the best nickel in the draft. Can also play high as a safety. You can move him around. They're going to be able to disguise their defense, which is a which is a, a stalwart in their scheme. So what you're saying is he plugs in right where Julian Love just left. No question. Plug and play. Now we get to inside the division, the Dallas Cowboys, and everybody wondering what direction they're going to go. Dalton Schultz is gone, and I think the tight end position is loaded this year. And if Luke Musgrave had stayed healthy, CD, I don't think he'd even be here at this point in time. Run after catch in Mike McCarthy's offense is a big deal. He gives you that. Yeah, and he's got great bloodlines, understands the NFL well, and we saw him at the Senior Bowl really show out. He's a great pick. DJ's mock draft is moving. We're moving. I love We're it. Moving. It's presented by NFL All Day, and there's more to come. Could Hendon Hooker be the fifth quarterback taken in the first round? That would be an all-timer. Good for second most all-time. Find out if DJ has the Tennessee quarterback in his final five. That's next. Hey, guys. We'd like to invite you to a party, and it starts tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's the NFL Draft presented by Bud Light, and if you can't be here in person in Kansas City, you can watch NFL Network Draft coverage presented by Verizon, and you can also check it out on ABC, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, streaming on NFL Plus, all at 8 p.m. Eastern. So... Here we go. Final five picks here on DJ's Mock Draft presented by NFL All Day. The Bills, they are up, and Brandon Bean is devising a master plan here to get past the Chiefs and the Bengals in the playoffs. So who's the newest face to help him out? Well, to me, I think about, like, the Mahomes doctrine. At some point in time, do we even keep looking at drafting defensive players? Just forget <laughs> it. we got to outscore them. So let's go get some more firepower on the outside, get the big receiver, Quentin Johnson, at TCU. Well, that's a big who goes with Gabe Davis, obviously. Obviously, digs out there running routes, more firepower, big plays downfield. And guess what? He can play over the top of a lot of defensive backs, go up in the air and take it from them. No doubt. And you, you then keep things moving here. We get to the Cincinnati Bengals. And I could have gone in a lot of different directions with this pick. I, I thought about maybe Jameer Gibbs going with the running back from Alabama. But I said, you know what? Let's get some defensive linemen. Let's go to Keanu Benton, who is somebody that I wanted to get his name out there because teams love this guy. He's great against the run. He's got some upside as a pass rusher. Yeah, no, boy, DJ Reader would like that. BJ Hill would like that. Help mm -hmm. him in the rotation. We get to the New Orleans Saints. They seem to have a type when it comes to edge rushers, and they're a lot like Miles Murphy. So when you have Davenport, who's left, he's now with the Minnesota Vikings. You have Turner, who's there. He just fits their style of play on the edge. And Cam Jordan will school him in the triple doubles, right? Pressure, sacks, and deflections. All right, so the Eagles, I said there's no way they take a running back at 10. So let's completely contradict myself, and why not? Let's give him well, one at 30. You said 10. Yeah. You didn't say 30. The coffee, the coffee was a little, maybe a little rich for Howie at 10. But uh -huh. right here at pick 30, coffee Jameer Gibbs, right now. It, it works. And now you put him in this offense with Jalen Hurts. That would be fun to watch. We get finally here to the Kansas City Chiefs. I did my one trade. I had my fun. I wasn't going to do anything. Not going to have him trade out. But this is, <laughs> yeah, this is one that I think could be a trade where if you see Darnell Wright start to slide, I think the Kansas City Chiefs would target him and go up and get him. So I'm matching the player with the team here at pick number 30. Yeah, they keep rebuilding that offensive line. Andrew Wiley no longer there. Right tackle. Darnell Wright plugs right in. I love that. Okay, so that mean, that's it. That, those are the that's picks. That's all she wrote. However, 
there's still a ton of talent right there on the board waiting to be picked up day two. So let's go best available presented by NFL all day. And DJ, I got to know here, best available edge rusher. Well, when you look at Will McDonald, to me, he's the most natural bender coming off the edge. Now, he's not the biggest guy. He's about 230 pounds, former basketball player. Once he gets to the top of his rush, though, he turns the corner better than anybody else in this draft class. Yeah, don't forget Felix Anna, DK. Uzama also in this state. He could be another one of those guys, too. Yeah, two really, really talented edge rushers. I think there's a chance he could be the pick with the Kansas City Chiefs. When you go to the most talented quarterback that's still out there, Hendon Hooker. Now, Hendon Hooker could end up being the 11th pick. He could end up being the 12th pick. He could be 20. You could look at him also, 23. I mean, he's, there's a lot of potential landing spots for him. I just didn't have one in this particular mock draft. Yeah, and you actually mentioned 16 to Washington at some exactly. point as well. A huge range for Hendon Hooker. And what's interesting about that for me, Colleen, when we started this whole process, he was firmly in the second round. Uh -huh. In the run-up, he gets mentioned a lot. He may find his place back in the second round again. But on day two, it won't take long to call no. his name. Where do you think he should go, though? As a, as a volunteer yourself? Well, for me, I'm looking at him. I'm thinking 23 to Minnesota. I think that'd be Ooh. the absolute perfect spot for him. We get to get a rep a little bit behind Kirk Cousins, Kevin O'Connell, a quarterback maker. I think that'd be fantastic for him. That is awesome. You know, DJ, <laughs> you did it again. Charles, you brought the analysis. This was fantastic. I love this as an exercise. I will love even more when we have the real answers. Thank yes. you. That, well, well, we got the real answers. He's 31 for 31. We'll see, I'll tell you what. We'll see it tomorrow. He's getting text left and right. It here fast enough. It yeah. starts get here fast 8 p.m. Eastern. You better know all the different places that you can watch it, but most DJ. importantly, NFL Network right here. Everybody enjoy the draft. Thank you, guys.